Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Jay's Today. On this episode, we will be having guests that include Caitlin Vasey, the play director, and Josh Beauregard, the main strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, before we get into our guests, um, Fall sports have officially wrapped up with mm-hmm. cross, boys cross country being our last team to go through. Um, shout out, they had a 12th place finish that was nine points away from eighth, being ranked 13th, pretty good. And then they also, they traveled to Nike Cross Regionals and they got ninth in their section, so pretty good to them. And then shout out to Holly Hetzer and Kaylin Torrance for qualifying for state and swim and dive for Southeast Polk. Kaylin Torrance, past guest on the show. Oh, yeah. It's nice to see um, Bonnerant, you know, athletes competing for other schools and sports that we don't offer here, but being successful at other places. For sure. We're welcoming to our show our first guest, Miss Vasey, the play director. This is a busy week for you, isn't it? It is a busy week. It is officially tech week for the show. What's the show about? Um, so we're doing Sally Cotter and the Censored Stone. And essentially, it's a parody of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Shocking. I know you never would have guessed from the title. Um, But it follows the same, like, big plot points of that first Harry Potter book. But everything is just a little bit different because parodies are uh, protected under First Amendment. So uh, we just – it's really goofy. It's silly. You have Sally. Um, She falls into this dream where she's transported to Frog Bowl Academy of Sorcery and Sorcerousness. Um, And then you have her friends Dave and Harmonica, and they go on this wild adventure with her, and they have a ridiculously wonderful time. So you just mentioned Tech Week. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so Tech Week is when all of the technical elements are integrated into a rehearsal all at once. So now no longer is it just our actors practicing their lines and their movements, which is called blocking, but they also have the lights now. We have sound, costumes, hair and makeup, um, stage management is there. Trying to think if there are any others. Um, So it's it's everyone (laughs) coming together all at the same time. And it's really just a bunch of trial and errors, which is why all the kids probably refer to it from by a different name, um, because it is a very long and stressful week because you're running everything. It feels like for the first time because all of those technical elements are new. So you talk about how in Tech Week, all of these elements are coming together, but there's obviously a lot of work before that. What really goes into putting a show together? A lot. So it started back in March when I started looking at different scripts. And then we had a script selected, we as in myself, because I'm the director, and uh, Mr. Talbot, because he's our technical director. So he takes care of all the technical stuff. Um, But we decided on a script by the end of May. And then we had to get the rights for it in July. And then from there, it's just planning out everything. So what props are we going to need? What costume inspiration? What um, set do we even want to have? And all of that has to come before we can even cast the show because we need to figure out what we need before we get who we need. And then we go through the audition process. The kids get their roles and they learn their lines. They have a couple weeks to memorize the shows about an hour and 15 minutes, they have an, uh, a couple of weeks to get all of that content memorized, including their blocking, facial expressions, how their body is moving, because all of that goes into acting too. So there are so many different elements that go into making the show that you see on Friday and Saturday. All right. So in the play, what students are occupying some of the principal roles? So we have a senior, Quinn McMurray, who is the title lead. Sally Cotter, Um, and then two juniors, uh, Lucas Hagen and Effie Hennessy are Dave and Harmonica, respectfully, 
We also have junior Levi Carpenter as Ruben on Rye Bread. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Uh, Mallory Nickel is um, Professor Under Drawers. Uh, so like the Dumbledore character. Um, those are some of the ones off the top of my head. But we have a total cast of 15 students who are um, making these characters come to life on the stage. From an outside perspective, we see a lot, you know, of just the actors. What really goes in behind the scenes? We have actually a crew of like 25 students that have put time into making the actors look good because that's what behind the scenes is all about making the rest of the show come together and kind of transporting you into this world so um adam morris who's a senior is our lighting designer she's currently training alexia debord on the light board since ada's going to graduate but all the lights you see are programmed by ada and alexia They've trained two people to do the spotlights. Um, sophomore uh, Ezra Adams does all of our sound. Um, they are the sound guru, know how the mics work, how to make them sound good, the levels to put everything at. Uh, we have two juniors as our stage managers, and essentially they make sure that what needs to be on the stage goes on the stage at the right time. Um, that's Layla Pyle and Claire Thompson. Um, and then we have senior Libby Huff who handles uh, designing all of the costumes. So everything that the characters are wearing is all from her brain. She puts it all together to make it look beautiful and to make you go, oh, yeah, that's supposed to be someone who's in slimy things because they're wearing green. So those are some of our primary um, tech people. This is making me excited. So when is this play? Uh, the show is this Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock. And if you want to come and see it, you can buy tickets on Hometown Ticketing ahead of time. It's $5 for like the upper level seating, which is a little farther back, and then $10 to be a little bit closer. Um, and then if you want to come and buy them at the door, uh, we do only accept card, but it is possible to buy at the door. Awesome. And then after this play what's what's next for the program well we're gonna take a i'm gonna take a second to breathe <laughs> and then next week starting on monday we are going to drop some hints as to what our spring musical is and we'll be announcing the spring musical on friday november 22nd so get hyped jay's today is sponsored in part by the bondurant for our athletic booster club the need for booster members is greater than ever, and a new member orientation will be held on Wednesday, November 20th from 5.30 to 6 p.m. in the high school library. This podcast is also supported by Vision Bank. For more than 140 years, Vision Bank has maintained its commitment to helping build strong communities. They have been locally owned and locally focused since 1884. Now joining us, we have Coach Bo who is the Director of Strength and Conditioning. How you doing? Good. 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 Um, so our first question is, we know that you worked at Iowa State, uh, William Penn, a couple of colleges. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to come to Bondurant? Well, um, that's an interesting question and kind of a long way around. I was actually working as a middle school health teacher at Urbandale, and uh, a friend of mine from Johnston, uh, coach Brian Luter over there. He's a phenomenal strength and conditioning coach at the high school level. Good friend of mine. He was a training partner of mine when we competed in powerlifting, and he called me up and uh, one day and said, hey, I know you're not exactly maybe ready to get back into strength and conditioning, but Bondurant has a position open, and uh, I really think you should uh, take a look at that one. Very lucky to have you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very lucky to have you, and uh, – your programs are doing a lot for us. Uh, how have you really changed the atmosphere of what you're doing here? Just trying to create the best situation to put student athletes in to get success. I mean, in sports and athletics, the, mo the number one most transferable skill from the weight room to any, any sport is confidence, right? So the more confidence we can get with our strength levels, our ability to move, change direction, 
things like that. Uh, I think it serves along. It, it serves. It serves multiple masters, so to speak, because at the high school level, a little bit different than what I was doing at the college level, where I had three sports. I had uh, track and field, swimming and diving, and wrestling. With wrestling being my primary sport, and um, all three of those are a little bit kind of different in how they're structured, different as far as psychology of the sport goes, uh, things like that. So I guess move, when I came to the high school level, uh, I always knew deep down that I was going to end up at the high school level anyway. I knew that Division One, certainly the professional side of things, was not for me long term. Um, and so I guess one of the things, one of the the biggest kind of transitional elements that I had to get over was kind of working within the context of a 43 minute class period and kind of what I could, what I could do within that 43 minutes. And, and, uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of adjustments that I've made along the way, but, you know, getting more people in there and exposed to lifting weights and, and, you know, strength and conditioning has been, has been nice because I think, uh, I think we've done a pretty good job getting people through the door and keeping them in there. Yeah, and I'm sure that will transfer into the new weight room that we're getting Absolutely. next next year. So what uh, what excites you about that? What new stuff are we getting? In? So uh, I think the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is more space. Um, as you all know, yeah. uh, it gets a little bit crowded in there. So there are some things that maybe fall through the cracks that we could be doing a little bit better job of, you know, if we had more space. And I think, I think uh, with this new weight room and – in the process, at least from the information that I've got, I think it's going to open up a lot of doors and create a lot of opportunities for success uh, moving forward. So I think it's going to be it's going to be really good. Uh, as far as what we're putting in there, we have, still have some details to work out, but I'm hoping that we'll have anywhere from 14 to 18 squat racks or stations to lift at um, with that are kind of have some interesting additions to it, uh, depending on depending on how all that shakes out. And then there's some uh, some extra machines that I want to get that are really good for developing the posterior chain and kind of um, getting, uh, building some strength in the those areas that, that all high school athletes need. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to, to get more information so that we can, we can get this ball rolling and so that we can create more opportunities. So. Yeah, I wish I could have more than one year with it. Yeah. I don't have any years yeah. with it. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm graduating before it's coming out. You've you've implemented a lot, um, especially like the female only weights, advanced weights. Um, me as a student, a female student athlete, was very excited when you added that. Um, what specifically are you doing to help train our student athletes through like programmings and philosophies? I guess my number one goal is to enhance the lives of student athletes, you know, create success both in and out of sport. Uh, I think that's the most important thing that I can do as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, yeah. And then the, the second thing would be enhance sport performance, obviously, or physical performance, human performance. Um, and then obviously there's some, uh, the third thing would be enhance or limit the amount of injuries that we have, reduce the risk of injuries. Um, the third one, I think, uh, yes, the weight room can help reduce injuries a little bit, but as you both know, um, in sports, injuries oftentimes can't be prevented. Overuse injuries, yeah, you can, things like that. But, uh, yeah, that's the those are the big three goals. Um, as far as my philosophy of training goes, you know, we want to do three-dimensional ground-based movements. Uh, we want to make sure that we're training with our feet on the ground, things like that. We're improving mobility where we can improve mobility, um, you know, speed, agility, change of direction, explosive power. Those are all things that go into to helping humans get better at performance, you know, because I think one of the things that gets lost in the mix with the strength and conditioning field, especially when you go to the college level or the professional level, you have all these strength coaches that are in silos based on sports, okay? And if you take a look at sports, yes, there are differences between sports, but every athlete needs to move explosively. Every athlete needs to be strong physically to be able to handle the ground reaction forces 
of running and changing direction, decelerating and reaccelerating over and over again. Um, those are things that uh, oftentimes um, we get kind of can kind of get bogged down with making sure that people are quick or making sure they can change direction or making sure this cone drill looks good. The biggest thing that athletes need first before any of that can come to fruition is strength. Because if you can't handle, you know, running and changing direction, okay, if your body isn't physically strong enough to handle that, then that's when injuries creep up. That's when, that's when we start to have energy going in a counterproductive direction, so to speak. All right, Coach. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks to both of our guests for coming out and talking with us. Um, definitely always nice to pick Bo's brain a little bit and uh, go watch the play this weekend. And our next episode, it's uh, already that time for winter sports. So we will be kind of previewing that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's our show. Uh, always remember, it's a great day to be a Blue Jay.